Hey, it's Christine Horn, the Booking Magnet. Welcome back to another episode of Booking Magnet Magic. <laughs> oh, I love saying that in case you cannot tell. Today, you get to meet one of my managers. Her name is Angie Lucania. She is one of the managers at Entertainment Lab, one of my amazing managers. And uh, Angie and I just have a, we, we, we vibe. We vibe. You're gonna love this conversation. You know how like you can just tell you're on the same page from things you share on social media, quick email exchanges. That's how it has been with Angie and I. Uh, she's a San Francisco Bay native. Um, she went to CSUN. She studied cinema and television arts and screenwriting. And um, Angie just has a way of digging deep, thinking deep, and. What I love about her approach, even as a manager, is she understands that us actors, us artists, are filled with emotions and feelings because she herself is an artist. And I think who better to help guide your career than someone who truly gets you. So get you a snack, buckle up, because we're going deep here. We're not, we're not being surface. None of these conversations have been, but you're really gonna enjoy this conversation. And I, and I know you're gonna enjoy hearing it from a perspective of um, a manager. So enjoy this episode of Booking Magnet Magic. I'm like smiling because I'm like excited. I'm excited. You see my okay. cheek? I have rosy cheeks and it's not just the blush, Angie. <laughs> Me too. I get like the smiling too much and now my face hurts thing. <laughs> oh my gosh, y'all are in for a huge treat. I am I feel really honored because I'm here with Angie and she is one of my managers. But what's nice about this relationship that we've developed over the years is we, we speak a similar language. And I feel like we've gotten to know that, I think through Instagram mostly, seeing what each other posts, which is really nice, which is really like, warms my heart like so when we can have even we can have whether it's through email or we're talking on the phone there's a different language that's being spoken that is still understood if that makes sense to you oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so thank you for being here then you, you're having a thank good you. day thank you <laughs> it helps if you only wash it like once a week you know? <laughs> there you go. There you go. oh i love it welcome to booking magnet magic y'all if you have missed any part of this series make sure you catch up there's some amazing conversations that we've been having and you don't want to miss any part of it you know today we're switching it up a bit because we're not talking just only from the actor perspective i really wanted to invite you here angie because i wanted to hear you're an artist yourself and you are you you are a manager for talent. So I know you have such a unique perspective in how you approach your work and you see so much and you hear us. That manager actor relationship is something special, which we'll get to. But first, tell me about you. Where are you from? How did you even get? I know you're an amazing dancer. I get to, I love when you post things from your from you dancing and images and, and stuff. How did you get started? Tell me about you. Sure. Um, I'm from the Bay Area. I grew up in Northern California and I did grow up in the performing arts. I did grow up in dance studios and singing and performing. Like I did do acting stuff when I was really young, you know, community, kids theater, whatever, you know. Um, and I've always enjoyed that kind of way of expressing yourself. I've always enjoyed that. So in turn, of course, I became a total like indie film nerd in middle school and high school and like, you know, just thinking like, well, maybe I'll be a psychologist or something. And then I did like a film as literature class or something my senior year. And I was like, oh, I can like watch TV for a living. I'm like, yeah, like, let's <laughs> let's get into the film and see if I like it. And so that's what I did. And I transferred to Cal State Northridge and they have a cool like working man's film school program, you know, and I was like, how can I get away with going to film school without editing? And I was like, oh, I'll do screenwriting because I already came from a writing background, too, you know, so I okay. was like, I was like, yeah, I could do this, you know, and and that's a different side of the industry, you know, that I sometimes dabble in with the lit department and things. And it, it, it has similarities, obviously, with um, writers and actors, you know, they're both like uh completely self-involved and also super insecure, you know? <laughs> so it's it's kind of similar, except one hides in the background more, but you right, know, it's, right. it's it's still an art that you're constantly um, developing and, and it's a muscle you're always working on, you know? And you don't really get to like 
win the Olympics of this stuff. I mean, I guess an Oscar would be equivalent to that, but even Oscar winners, nominees would say that they're always competing with themselves, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, from there, I, yeah, went to school as a film major, dance minor, and then I like waited last minute to get an internship. (laughs) And so uh, I think my senior year, I got an agency internship thinking I wanted to get into casting or something and work with actors somehow and then I ended up kind of liking the agent side and then um, a couple years later I ended up being a junior agent at that company Mm -hmm. and then I moved on to entertainment lab where I am now as the assistant and then after a year I was a junior manager and then manager and now I'm a a literary and talent manager so yes she is and she's amazing (laughs) (laughs) so what what a journey As you kept exploring, I love that you, I actually love that you tried your hat at different things because it gives you a unique knowledge that you bring to the table. How have you continued to nurture your artist within you? Honestly, it's been a journey. And and that's partly why I do feel for actors and artists in general, because sometimes you go in waves of feeling inspired or writer's block or just feeling way too depressed to function with things, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like I'm constantly reacquainting myself with what I love to do and stuff and like buying art supplies and, and just, you know, getting back into dance again after COVID, you know, and, and working at that again and reminding myself like, no, you love this a lot, you know, like to the point, like I never wanted to make that a career. I wanted it for me, you know, and And that for me always reminds me with actors, like, what are you coming back to? Like, what's the core of why you do this? Um, And that song from a chorus line, you know, what I did for love, like constantly comes through my head. Like when I think of, of course, I totally cried at that show, you know, like, but like, how do you not? Right. So, you know, I think about that sometimes with actors that are getting kind of bleak, you know, and it's like, well, you know, you don't come into this industry, you know, without knowing exactly like you better really effing love it you know um because it's gonna get hard and it's gonna make you doubt yourself all the time and I have a lot of old childhood trauma stuff about that stuff too about being seen or being able to express myself comfortably and I'm still working on that shadow work to feel even comfortable getting on here and not feeling like an imposter even though I've been doing this for years but it's like you know what I mean so like for me I can see that aspect with a lot of clients and I can't help but like I'm giving you this advice, but I'm also taking it for myself, you know, and the teacher, the teacher yeah. teaches himself. I say that all the time. Yeah. And it, and you're always going to be a student in life or in the arts or in your career, or, you know, like you're always just competing with yourself in that way too. So, you know, and, and that kind of humility is important too, because it's obvious there's a lot of, a lot of toxicity and, uh, you know, eager worship in this industry too, you know, and I, yeah. I never want to lose sight of like, what I'm here to do, you know, and, and what I'm here to help move along my clients' careers and stuff, wherever that takes them, you know, I don't expect everyone to become Meryl Streep or whatever, you know, like it's not everybody's um, trajectory to be in that space. And people can be happy being a working character actor. And some people can be happy being in the indie space and some, you know, and, and that's, what's wonderful about it, you know, and, and being open to what that's going to look like. Yeah. And that's, I love what you, how you said that because at the core of it, you have to know what your what success looks like to you. Exactly. Yeah. Just like you just said, like for some people, like, hey, if I just, as long as I can pay my mortgage, I'm good. It's just mm-hmm. that for some people. And then you know the flip yeah. side of it. So that mm-hmm. that but that that requires you to go in and ask yourself the real question about right. what does this really look like for me? Not my aunt, not my cousins, not my husband, not my wife, right. but like for me, not expectations. Because it's, you know. You can see your friends working, y'all. I know y'all know. You see your friends working and like, oh, they're making great. They're doing great at voiceovers. Maybe I'll do voiceovers. Meanwhile, you hate voiceovers. Right, right. (laughs) Yeah. You know, you just, it's so easy to be tempted. So I love that you talked about that. Yeah, yeah. When you were growing up, you know, you always had a passion for, for art in some way. What were, who were some of the people or what were some of the types of things you would love to take in? Was it like, was it plays? Was it dance recitals? Was it, you know, I know you fell in love with TV, with film, you said. Yeah. What was it? Like, who, who were some of the people that just made you lean in? Do you remember? Or what did they, what did they embody or, or give off for you? Um, I was always into the kind of like raw 
give it to you straight kind of indie stuff, you know, like I love Natasha Leone and I love like um, Elliot Page, you know, and, and everyone that kind of weren't afraid to be real. I've always loved, I've always loved realistic fiction. I wasn't a big fantasy person or anything, you know? So for me, like the IFC channel was like my favorite thing ever. I used to watch, um, I don't know if you ever saw it, but Dinner for Five that John Favreau hosted. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so good. Um, cause that was a very much like an industry show that I used to watch when I was like 12, 13, you know, and thinking it was so cool to get an inside look because he would do it as like a, a round table, like we're having dinner, we're smoking, we're just shooting the shit, you know, and getting that kind of inside look and stuff was, was interesting to me. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if I specifically, like, certainly there are certain genres in dance and singing and things like that, that I love, but I don't think it was uh when I was really young and I still thought I wanted to be an actress singer dancer whatever like I always thought I would be like Broadway you know because I did love the the musicality singing dance you know just every way you could present a feeling was really yeah. inspiring to me you know and then over time it became more about the writing and and what's coming on what's the character development here and, and the dynamics between people like seeing that always inspired me because it it made me understand that actors are messengers you mm -hmm. know and they're the ones that can present um a reflection of yourself to people right. and i i've always been inspired by that and so there's always like a, an element of respect i had for actors in that way um i didn't expect that i would be working in representation and actually right. seeing like behind the curtain kind of like what kind of stuff goes on, what neuroticism is, what the, you know, like that. And it's been re rewarding though, in terms of figuring out like what actors need to hear to keep going when they didn't book that thing or, you know, and, and figuring out like, you know, how does that translate in life and, and stuff too, you know, because it's kind of um, like a microscopic look into people. Uh, yeah. Being an actor, it's like, you really have to get comfortably comfortable looking at yourself, you know, so. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. And and hopefully with the loving eye, which, yeah. which can be challenging when you're looking to improve or depending on how, just how you're approaching that review, you know, it can mm -hmm. go, one, it can go one way or the other for sure. And your relationship to rejection and stuff too. Oh, yeah. She said, yeah, relationship to rejection. <laughs> That's a whole word. Talk about that for a second. When you, when yeah. you, when you say that, what does that mean for you? How, how, and as you see, if you, as you've seen us, how have you seen the, the gamut of us right. actors with, in our relationship to rejection? Right. Well, I'd say like everybody with the pandemic and COVID and having to deal with being forced to be inside and looking at yourself and what's going on with your life. Um, I've seen a lot of shifts in clients and things. And certainly as some have booked bigger things and become more successful in their own right and, and all that, you know, um, and then also dealt with things not working out and feeling really low, you know, the relationship to rejection doesn't really become about the external. It becomes about how you feel about rejection within yourself and what parts of you you needed to look at even growing up how you're treated by your family and what you're dealing with now or like whatever happened with this breakup that shifted everything and you know having to look at all these aspects that you know you always have to come back to center and what matters to you and and it doesn't necessarily matter what anyone else thinks it's like how do you think about yourself how do you feel about yourself and are you being authentic to what you want to do are you being genuine for what feels right for you like that to me is more important than like you booking X amount of credits so that you can be a guest star actor now, or that, you know, all these metrics and stuff that I'm like, it really, it doesn't matter. Cause it's not one size fits all, you know, right. but, yeah. um, but that kind of aspect and seeing that journey is also really exciting and rewarding and also really like sad. And like, a, I feel for you kind of way, if it feels like it's not really clicking, you know, for them, or it's just, mm -hmm. it's, they're too bogged down by aspects of, you know, things that are out of their control or it, it becomes a lot bigger than you not getting released on pins every other week or something, you know, like it, it's something bigger than that generally. And being able to look at that stuff and, and find things that make your heart sing outside of this work, obviously is, is really important, you know, and 
you know, and remember what is important, like on a grand scale. And I'm sure a lot of people during COVID with all the deaths and things really recognize what's important for them when they have parents passing and friends passing and, and realizing what does life really mean to me right. that I'm going to let myself be stuck in this space and, and not be um, my true self and express what I really want. And, and I don't want to play safe in my tapes anymore. And, you know, and like all that kind of experience. Yeah. Yeah, that's so good. And you're absolutely right. It's just that time that we all had really, you just <laughs> got to know yourself on a deeper level, whether you wanted to or not. Right. And I think it was a beautiful reminder. Well, for me, I'll speak for myself. You know, we're all gifted with our gift yeah. and no one can take it away. Right. Yeah. So the booking that didn't come through or whatever it is, doesn't stop you being an artist doesn't take the gift away, right? Right. Perhaps yes. it's, not, it's not being used with that production or with, with the, that group of people. Right. But I, I, I'm, that's you know, and that's my goal with you know Hollywood bound actors and this podcast is to remind each and every one of us that you know you're still you're an artist because right. you are. Yeah. <laughs> you know whether you're being paid or not. Like, and yeah. also that means not only doing the art. You know, right. I, know a, I know I'm a broken record to my my student. <laughs> not only doing the art when an audition right. comes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, because yeah. yeah. how does that honor the gift that you have? You gotta keep, you know, keep working it. Yeah. You know, I, as a as a manager now, and you've been it's, you've been on the journey for quite some time now. You know, the goal of this podcast is to remind our viewers that each and every one of us has something that's magnetic and magical, right? It's mm -hmm. just, it's so many times I know I hear it and I'm sure you hear, it. I, I just want to do something to stand out. I just want to be, I want to be different. You know, I want them to, you know, I don't know what they want. You know, what do they want? I don't know what they want, right? <laughs> so when you do, when you take a meeting, right? maybe when you and the team are considering a new talent, what is the thing that, that you see mm -hmm. first in people? Because, you know, people talk about people having an it factor, right? Right. And I know we can get caught up. Well, do I have it? Do I have it? And I'm like, in my opinion, we all have it. We got, we have something, right? Yeah, it's, it's an inside job, babe. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you to decide if you're it or not. Right. You know? No yeah. one determines that for you. Sorry. You know, <laughs> y'all heard that, right? But for you, what is it that, that, that draws you to people new, new art, what new it's, whether it's on camera talent or a writer for you personally, is it, is it a, is it an aura vibe? Is it like a, a light? Is it a twinkle? What is that for you? And for, and I know you can't speak for the team just for you in this, as you've been in this industry. I mean, the it factor is obviously hard to define and it means something different to everybody in terms of reps and things. Um, to me, I'm always looking for actors to be their most authentic self, because that is the that is the factor, the, you know, the it factor. It's, it's you knowing exactly who you are. And obviously that's never going to be like completely realized, but you know, your essence and you know what you're bringing to the table and you know where you fit, you know? And so I, I always get the, and I know all other reps get this. It's like, Oh, where do you see me? Where do you think I fit? And I'm like, I mean, I just had that earlier this week with a potential client. I'm like, it's not really up to me to decide what you what I think you are like yeah do I need to understand your attitude and your behavior your essence to kind of get a feel of where you may fit better on one breakdown where you're right for two roles yeah but like it's not up to me and and frankly I don't really I won't know until you've been on our roster for a few months and I can kind of see what things you're getting pinned for or called back for or what things you're getting called in for and um and seeing those tapes and seeing what you book and seeing what your reel develops into um but I'm always looking for that energized, excited feeling to be able to present your gift, you mm -hmm. know, like, and you can kind of get the sense of people who do know who they are, that they're asking the right questions in meetings and they're, they're getting a sense of what they're inspired to do. And maybe they do have a vision board or maybe they don't, you know, but they do know that like, I'm excited to get into this world over here, you know, and it, it's not so, you know, it's more internally motivated, not so much like, what can you do for me if blah, 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 blah. I'm like, listen, yeah. like 
And as you've said in your videos before, it's like, you've got to do your homework and decide what that is, you know, and what works for you, what coach is working for you, what classes have been inspiring you and building your toolbox and things, you know, and there's only so much we can do on our side. You know what I mean? Like, I, I can't like give you, like, I can't want you to succeed more than you do. You know what well, I mean? <laughs> say that. Yeah. Yeah. Say and that I, yeah. yeah. You can't be the one who's going to validate. That. Yeah. Yeah. Constant. Uh, I can't do it. I can't yeah. do it all the time. Like there's, there's not enough time in the day in some ways. And I don't mean to shade anybody for that, but I'm saying like, you know, certainly communicate to us because I want to see where your journey is going. You know, if you're telling me, oh, I'm in this class and I'm doing this, and I'm really excited to be able to do more roles like that. I'm like, great. Okay. Like that does motivate your rep to work more for you in a way. And, and we do need to see that. And you do need to communicate with us because we aren't going to call you every day and be like, how's your mental health today? Oh, like, it's, right. like, that's above my pay grade. Okay. <laughs> like, you know, but at the same time, it's like, sure, you can certainly care a lot about your clients in this way, but a lot of it is an inside job and doing your homework and feeling like, you know, when I do look for that factor, it's because they're very excited and, and, it, and it's not so much like, oh, positively only, but it's like, they're very comfortable and grounded in what they know they are delivering. Um, and you don't see that every day, obviously. And a lot of those people who are in that space now did learn the hard way, did fall on their face and, and you've preached it. You know what I mean? And that's what actually does create that kind of, oh, but then I got back up and I did it. So I know I can do it again you know, mm -hmm. and, and just like anything, when you're getting started coming out of school and you're very green, you're just like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. It's like, but you don't know until you've done it, you know? <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. yeah it's, just, it's, it's the school of hard knocks, y'all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I was talking to an actress, Chelsea Crisp, who's done tons of work recently and for this podcast. And she, she was just like, if you are seeking validation for anything from this career, like this, that's, just the wrong way to approach it. Like yeah. that's all that is all that inner work. You know, sometimes many times, Angie, you, you know, actors come to me like, Oh, Christine, you've been booking a lot. Tell me what you did. Like, well, my, my mindset. Yeah. 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 But no, tell me what you really did. Like my mindset, I had to do my, my personal development. Like that's not the sexy answer that a lot of people want to hear. And no. I I'm I'm not sad to tell you that's just, that's, that makes a huge just difference in how you can and deal with the ebbs and flows of this industry. Because yeah. one thing that is consistent is the inconsistency. Even oh, if you're yeah. on a show for 10 yeah. years, all, no show stays on forever. Nope. Yep. In the history of TV, nothing's been on forever. <laughs> Everything comes to an end. Right. You, know, you know, so how have you you personally, you know, dealt with the ebbs and flows of this industry, you know, you know, and especially at, with the pandemic, not every agent made it, not every manager made it, was able to sustain, you know, mm -hmm. what does that look like for, for, for you and how has that been over the years and any tools that you use um, maybe to stay in a healthy mind state or to deal with that? I mean, yeah, like you said, it, it comes in waves. Um, you know, certainly during the pandemic, I'm not going to lie, I totally did some prosperity rituals for our company, <laughs> you know, like I did. I'm like, I don't, you know, do I think we're going to be fine? Yeah. Like, but it can't, can't hurt. hurt. <laughs> can't hurt to do some little woo magic. Okay. Like hey. if anything, if it mind fucks me into doing it, I'm doing it. Like, right. right. And, and a lot of that has to be like, you know, use that actor ability on yourself. Even if you have to convince yourself with your act, like you're just acting as if, you know, like mm -hmm. take that improv training and use it on your own ego and your own soul and your own like sense of things, because in order to manifest things like that, you kind of have to be in resonance with that space, you know, and, and not so much critical companion self, you know, self-fulfilling prophecy kind of stuff, you know, um, but certainly, yeah, with waves, obviously, yeah, a lot of um, agents and managers left the industry completely, decided to go back to school or hop different companies or shut down theirs and be absorbed by others, you know, but um, I do think everything kind of happens for a reason or in divine right timing and divine right timing is usually not the answer most actors like to hear. But um, 
but it is a journey. And so when things do happen, that shifts your life in some way. And I see it with big name actors too, though, you know, like, and you can see like a lot of them had to go back into hermit mode and come back doing a completely different like movie and to be respected and seen in that way. Okay. Like it doesn't just become easy because you have a name, notable name kind of vibe, you know, it's like you sometimes will have to convince your own reps. This is what I'm doing, you know? Um, but I can't say it's easy or there's like a right track way to do that. But if you can start by convincing yourself, it's true you know, then that kind of energy comes to you too. And that's what I kind of try and tell actors when they have like a really low audition rate going or like they haven't had like a booking in this amount of time or whatever. And I'm like, sometimes, you know, it's because something else is going on in your life where it's like, it's not coming to you on purpose because there's something else you need to look at right now. You you need to focus on right now. (laughs) You went there. Sorry. (laughs) Oh, that gave me chills. That gave me chills because that's so, oh, again, that's so good. You know, when it gets too quiet and Lord knows you've gotten an email or two from me in the past and, and, you know, I arm arm myself, you know, but, you know, for me, I don't know if it's because I'm delusional or just overly confident. Right. I consider myself humble, but confident. Right. Right. But, you know, sometimes you're like, what's wrong with them? Like, don't they see this work? Like, right. what is happening? Right. Even sometimes y'all be like, that was really good, Christine. Like, and then, oh, that another pin, oh, another pin, oh, another pin. Mm-hmm. Gone. Okay. okay, this is the joke. Okay, sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I can definitely say, and those of you who have been watching me or following me know this. I mean, when I started calling myself a booking magnet, that was, that's the work. That is really the work Angie is talking about right now. Right. The acting as if saying it, it, I just decided it will, it shall be so like, mm-hmm. oh, it just became part of my mantras, my affirmations, you know, as a student of law of attraction, like I was like, I'm, and I'm just going to operate from where I desire to be and not be fooled mm-hmm. by the right now. And I just, I mean, if you are watching me, y'all, I've trained you to call me the booking magnet just because I started <laughs> calling myself first. I mean, even my right. team, like, hey, go booking magnet. Like, yeah. it's like this wonderful vibe that's going on, but it had to start with me first. Yeah. Yeah. So you all have the same power to, mm-hmm. to do and call forth the, the reality that you see in your mind's eye, but you have to see it first. Mm-hmm. And you, and just keep operating from it. Even if you, even if you don't see the proof of it right now. Yeah. Yeah. And don't get caught up in the anxiety of when or how it's going to look. It's kind of like, I have to do this with my own stuff. I'm like, I am open to the universe to give me what, you know, is for my highest good in whatever way that looks. Cause it may not be how you think it looks. It may be like a no name co-star that turns into a name that turns into a recurring, which I've totally seen, you know, um, a few clients, at least I can think of now, like, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily have to look exactly how you see it. You know, is it important to manifest with details? Yes, but not too detailed, you know, like, um, it it is, it's a, it's kind of a process and, and learning what that looks like. And even I tell clients now that maybe like they're getting frustrated, they're only getting like smaller roles or whatever. And it's like, well, if you don't care about this known in coaster audition, well then play around, experiment, like approach it the way you would normally, because obviously you don't care about it anyway. So you might as well like get it in your head that you're super excited to do this and make an impression on casting and, you know, like whatever you have to do to tell yourself that, you know, and then just see what happens, you know, and, and see what you're like, oh, I can't wait for that guest star audition to come in. That's like for my favorite show. (laughs) Right. You, you, You don't even have to like, believe it such or sit and wait now and decide when it's coming you know it's just like or even honestly I'll be like really out there right now this morning I'm like oh I feel so out of shape I'm like miss dance and then I I get out of the shower and I'm like instead of looking at my body and being like oh I don't like how it looks blah blah I was just like I can't wait to see my body transform oh yeah you know like I I like I know what that feels like I've seen it before I can't wait to and that's usually what helps me actually get to my goals I'm trying to work on you know it's like if you get into the space of positivity with whatever it is that maybe you're more bogged down about it gets a lot easier to be in flow 
with whatever you're looking towards, you know, and it doesn't always mean love and light all the time. And it doesn't mean you have to like fake it all the time. You can have your bad days. It's just, you don't want those bad days to last for so long that you get stuck and you get, and it gets harder to get out of, you know, and that's where I get nervous and concerned for certain clients if they're in that space a lot. And I can tell in every reply to their audition, it's just like Eeyore, you know, like I can't, you know, that's when I get kind of like check in, like, Hey, what's going on, you know, but yeah, um, yeah you got to focus. Yeah. I'm sure you feel it. And I would imagine you had to protect your energy because mm-hmm. you, I mean, the entertainment lab, I mean, y'all rep a lot of actors and a lot of, just a lot of talent. Yeah. And as a coach, I have to protect my energy. Like after sessions, I have a whole process I do to release things. I care yeah. and I forgive, but yeah. it's not mine. You know, yeah. I, something I say to myself, I plant my feet. I got this from my friend, Jessica. I right. plant my feet. I take deep breaths and I say, this is not mine. I release it and I set it free. And I'll repeat that a few times. This is not mine. Yeah. I release it and I set it free. So I get to hold mm. space for you in the moment, but I can't because whew, that will... Yeah. And I'm sure you feel it. You know, mm-hmm. all, all this is so juicy. I, on that note, what would you say in your personal experience is, and we we DM'd on Instagram about this many times, yeah. more than once. Right. Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn, The Booking Magnet. I am so excited to invite you to our next event. It is called Booking Magnet Live. It's happening in Atlanta, Georgia on July 15th and 16th, 2022. You're going to spend two days surrounded with actors oh, just like you. Actors who want more, actors who are looking for a safe space, a sanctuary, a safe haven to express themselves, to learn, to grow, and to connect. So I'm excited for you to experience that. Make sure you join us July 15th and 16th. You can click the link below, and I'm so excited to see you there. What would you say is the, you feel is the biggest misconception for actors about managers or agents when it gets slow for them? Oh yeah. They think that we forgot about them. Um, you know, that we don't care about their work anymore or are they even submitting me? Uh, a lot of that kind of stuff, you know, where it's like, again, with the energy thing, it's like, I can't take it personal. I know I could go into my ego space and make it about me. Mm-hmm. And I know it's not because I was in a great mood like two minutes ago. You know <laughs> what I mean? So, um, and also recognizing when it is mine and having to protect that space because, you know, sometimes when actors are really out there, like they'll say things they don't mean and regret it later. And, and I never want to be in a space where I do that, you know? And so I have to be able to ground myself before meetings and things too, because I do take it all on. I mean, that's part of being like an empath and certainly most actors are too. So, you know, it's knowing to protect your energy in that space too. Um, But yeah, usually it's that, um, is there, it's helpful when actors are like, is there anything I could be doing differently? And it's like, yeah, get us new headshots or, you know, maybe switch up your coach or something. And, um, but yeah, a lot of it's like, if they think it's silence, it's like, well, we're, we're working, you know, and, and we're consistent. I mean, obviously people who are with it, like know that, you know, we're, if anything, we're consistent with auditions in, in a broader sense, you know, it's like, because we work the same way every day, you know what I mean? It's not like we're a one man show. And if I go on vacation, no one's submitting you, oh, you know what I mean? And like, you left where she like, if anything, I have to hold back when Christine's working. Cause I'm like, I mean, huh, she's in every episode the next like season, you know, like, uh, you know, pick my battles here, right. you know, with, uh, pissing off casting with too many pin conflicts. Cause you book so much. So, <laughs> you know, champagne problems, <laughs> champagne problems. Right. But, um, yeah. So I think what, what's really important to me and I really want to like, you know, bring home with actors in general is like you need to communicate because we aren't mind readers we're obviously busy with other clients and trying to do our best to service everyone and uh the best way we can and if you're going through something personal and and maybe it's helpful for us to know just so we know what to expect from you like if there's a reason you're canceling auditions back and you know all back to back or whatever it's like it helps us to know where you're stand where you're at you know 
Um, but also just things you're working on personally, maybe like, hey, I'm, I'm getting back into this um, new class with this um, great teacher or whatever. And I'm also in therapy, you know, like to me personally, like that's all great stuff to me, you know, as yeah. is, is you recognizing what stuff needs to be done internally to um, affect the external, you know, because we all just create our own reality, right? And everyone only sees, you know, reflected how they see things, you know, and so if if you come from a victim mentality or a chip on your shoulder mentality, everything your actor, like your rep does is, is personal, you know, yeah. and uh, when it's definitely not, but, you know, um, it, all of those kinds of things kind of um, inform what's happening in, in your, in your external reality. So, yeah. Yeah, that's so good. Thank you for that. Because I've, and, and that's why I was saying, Angie and I have DM'd about this before, because I've had so many, I've, I mean, I, at this point I've coached thousands of actors, but I hear it all. <laughs> it's the same story. I'm going to, I think I should just drop my manager. They're just, uh, they're, it's been, I haven't called me and, and I ha, I'm like, and I'll say, well, hold, hold, hold up, hold up. Yeah. Why are you go dropping people? Mm-hmm. I'm like, like what, when was the last time you reached out? Well, I haven't heard from them since what, what, when was the last time you reached out? Yeah. And then it's crickets, silence. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm always like, if you don't hear from your team, they should hear from you. Like if, for me, yeah. my, my personal, my personal rule is once a month, if I, it's rare now, of course, we, we are always in communication with somebody on the team, but if it's when, even when it's quiet, yeah, that could be, a, I would say like top of the month check-in. Hey team, this is what I'm up to. Had a great month doing X, Y, Z. Thank you for all that you're doing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And just, just a check-in. So it's no excuse that your team hasn't heard from you in months. Like, yeah. and it's, you know, be a, it's an earnest check-in. Just look like, like, yeah. Angie, even like just what's going on with you personally, because especially with the manager relationship mm-hmm. is the more between the manager and agent It's typically yeah. um, not always depends on the, your team, but it's typically the more intimate one, you know, that yeah. would share more with. So yeah. I love that you share that just, but it's, I know we're saying the same thing, but it's that checking in with yourself. Yeah. And help me help you. is a big right. part of it too, because again, not a mind reader. And yet do we have a lot of clients? Yeah. But you know what? Not all of them need the same attention as others. You know, everybody on our roster is at a different point in their career. They can be at Christine's level and they can be developmental and have one credit, you know. And um, and honestly, I don't work with Christine all the time. Uh, A lot of what Christine does is I'm preaching the same thing like and she knows I'm here if if she needs me. But, you know, a lot of the time it's just being present and holding space in a way and um, and and letting them know that we are here, whether you hear from us or not, because we're busy, um, you know, getting auditions and things like that or, or pitching or, you know, sending people out for exec meetings. And, you know, like we have our hands in a lot of different things at the same time, you know, and um, we'll always make time, but we just may have to schedule it, you know. But yeah. Um, yeah, help me help you, you know, and, and I love when, you know, actors are also doing stuff on the side, maybe they're doing a short film on the weekend, and they're, they're playing a role we maybe have never seen before. So they send us some video on it, like, oh, isn't this cool? Like, and it's great. It's like, cool, let's add it to Actors Access or whatever, you know, and mm-hmm. like all of those little things, you know, it's like, it's called planting seeds, you know, mm-hmm. like, and you don't have to be so direct with, with reps, like we're, we're not stupid. It's like, we can see what you're doing and it's like plant seeds, you know, it doesn't have to be so explicit. It's like, give me, you know, give me an example of explicit. What's explicit? Um, just, just to, just to, tick, just to entertain. I me. mean, I guess in the one sense, it'd be like, kind of like without making it like verbatim, it's just kind of like, where are my auditions or like, what's going on? Or, you know, what are, you know, what, what's going on over there? Or, right. You know, very like external. Yeah. And I'm like, I, yeah, you know, it's like, we're not really fu- functioning different than when you were having a, a, a big wave spell, you know, like how we operate will always be consistent. So whatever wave you're getting almost always is internally what you're creating and, and drawing to you and magnetizing to you, mm-hmm. you know, which obviously I can't preach to everybody because some people don't think that way, which is totally yeah. fine. I don't necessarily want to push that on anyone that's not ready to hear it, you know? Um, yeah. And that's also partly why I don't always reach out 
you know, I mean, some clients I'm actually friends with in real life. So, you know, it is a little different because I'm already kind of mutually in our own worlds together. But a lot of the time it's just, I'm the kind of person I understand that my energy is such that like, if I dig in where I'm not wanted, they'll react bigger. And that's not everybody's like that. But I know that my energy is penetrating enough that I have to be careful who I'm reaching out to or not, or you only come to me when you're ready to hear the truth. Right. And that's the truth. And I've accepted that I have always been the friend that was too honest or brutally honest. And I've gotten nicer over time as I've learned to heal my own shit, but like, I'm always going to be that person, you know? And so, yeah, I'm not for everybody. I'm not everybody's cup of tea manager or otherwise, you know, and that's okay. And just like, you're not everybody's cup of tea for X show because it's a completely different vibe than your comedy or whatever, you know, like you need to be confident with what you're going in with and know that I'm not going to look and figure out what casting wants. I'm just going to give the version of me. Mm. And if you are, you either like it or you don't, and that's okay. You yeah. know, like you don't want to fake something that you wouldn't technically be like, you guys are all just playing a version of yourself. We're not all Meryl Streep. Okay. Like, right. you know, so figuring out what that is for you is all that matters. You know, you can give a couple different takes of that, but like be okay knowing that it's just not their vibe. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I did a video once on Instagram and I was like, look, some, you might be a delicious, juicy apple, <laughs> not a delicious, crunchy apple, but they want a juicy orange. All right. Both, both are wonderful, wonderful fruits, yeah. but they just, they, they needed an orange for that. And you were crunchy, right. delicious apple and doesn't make either one bad, you know? Yeah. So I love that. Oh, this and is so it's, cool. it's so true though. I've seen stuff where I've like pitched someone I thought maybe great for this breakdown. And then maybe someone else on the roster got the audition instead and booked it. And then I watch it later. And it's like how actors watch stuff they didn't book. You're like, mm -hmm. oh, I see why I didn't get that. Because obviously yeah. they wanted X5 and I'm not going to be able to produce that because that's not genuine to me. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. It's like, so you know, even reps can get it wrong in terms of what they're pitching to casting. Cause we don't necessarily know what the tone of the show is. If it's a new pilot and we haven't read right. the script, you know what I mean? So it's like, I mean, it happens, but it's like, it's still a win to me if the actor gets an audition because it's just an opportunity for that casting office to see you later and get a sense of you, you know? Yeah. And listen, I just totally believe that there, were, there was one, it was, this was years ago. And I had an appointment pre-COVID, y'all. Went back mm -hmm. back in the day, we would go in in person to auditions. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember it was an audition. It was for like a new show, mm -hmm. but as like I was as I was getting ready to head there, I got an email from the team saying, "Casting just let us know that there was an offer out, and that offer basically is closed. Mm -hmm. Do you still want it? Do you want to cancel?" And I remember mm -hmm. saying, "No, hell no, yeah." I was like, "I'm going." Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, no, they're gonna see me, like, yeah, because I know we the big picture, like yes. that's one role, and this is a big picture, and I want to build that. I had never seen that office before. I was like, yeah. I want to build that relationship. So that's something to think about too. Like for me, none of it is a waste. Mm -hmm. None yeah. of it is a waste. And Angie, you know, shows that there are certain shows that I've been calling again, again, again. I'm like, y'all are getting the whole Christine Horn show, which. I played the gamut of characters and I'm, you know, I'll say, you know what, this is, it's just, they get to just keep seeing me and I get to keep having fun. Even I've been very open about snowfall before I, you know, I auditioned almost every season for that. And even yeah. the season I booked in season four, I read for several roles before booking black diamond and Jeannie, you know, the casting director on my Instagram wrote right role, right time. Yep. Right. So right. we all, we have to stay encouraged and, you got to love it. And the goal should be just, and I know I'm a broken record, have fun, have yeah. fun and play because it's your gift. Yeah. And you get to decide what kind of energy you bring to every situation. And so that's another big part for me with clients that are feeling a little bogged down about things or not getting where they want or pins are getting released. It's like, but you still sometimes have to fool yourself and get into that energy space of being like happy to be here, you know, and, and be excited to do what it is you do, you know, and, and like, or you're just saying earlier, you know, I've also said the phrase, like, I forget what the phrase is originally, but it's kind of like, like what's meant for you will never pass you by. And so I kind of twist it to be like, well, the, the role that's right for you will never pass you by, 
because yeah. it's meant to happen, you know, whether you, and sometimes because this industry is a lot about luck, it may happen at a very inconvenient time. Maybe you just had a kid, you know, or like, you know what I mean? Like, or maybe you just got divorced and like your life is in shambles, you know, like yeah. sometimes life happens that way. And it's almost like you have to step up to the challenge of, are you going to give your whole energy to this now? Because this is what's happening. And as much as it is like an internal work to get to that level of where you want to be in your career, it also happens that you get the dream role when you are nowhere near a, an evolved, you know, like, like awakened being. Okay. That's exactly why there are actors out there that fall real hard or they get into drugs or they get, you yeah. know, they fall from grace as they say, you know, because if anything, that was just what they were in their life were meant to experience because something needed like Robert Downey Jr., you know, like, oh, I mean, that's there's so many long comeback. That is the yeah. comeback. And, and that's, what's crazy about this industry is like, as much as it will chew you up and spit you out, they also love those redemption stories, you know? So anything can happen. This is what I love about this town and this industry is like, uh, there's lots of preconceived notions about things, but I'm always like, I'm just gonna sit here and watch and see what happens. Cause I don't know, like I can think my own. I mean, did I think you were gonna play Black Diamond on Snowfall after everything you had booked beforehand? Me and your, uh, you know, your agent are, are good friends in real life. And we're yeah. just looking at each other like, what? I'm like, you haven't seen her reel yet? Oh my God, I got to send it to you. Like, we have no idea. And we love being surprised by our clients, you know? Yeah. And, and I love seeing that one self tape of a client I've had since I was a junior agent being like, oh, this changes everything now. Cause I didn't even see you that way. And it's so great to be pleasantly surprised by like what actors book, how they are on set, like how excited they are. And, you know, like that kind of stuff is like, the validating rewarding part for me, you know, and despite my day to day is, is pretty monotonous and tedious in a lot of ways, but at the same time, it's like those moments where you feel like you helped in some way. And, and, and that's all you can really ask for is, is, and seeing you, you all make me proud, <laughs> proud mama, <laughs> you know, like I, I love that part, you know, <laughs> I love that. I'm so tickled by that. Like, <laughs> I mean, she's no, she's not, you know, <laughs> y'all, if you don't, haven't seen my body of work, I do a lot of layered doctor, mom, <laughs> military. <laughs> right. I'm like, now, if it sent me your clip and I'm like, why is she a strip club? Like what? <laughs> It was awesome. <laughs> I had so much fun in that audition. Like for me, <laughs> that is the best part. Like I love, I personally love the research and the creation of characters, mm -hmm. but I get to decide, you know, casting director Seth Kasky was on a panel I hosted over last summer. And he said, I know he, he didn't invent this, but he said it and it stuck with me. He's like in that moment, at, in the audition, whether it's your, you're at home in your self tape or you're in person, in that moment, you have the role. Yeah. And that might be the only time you have it, but it's yeah. yours. A so lot of you, that. Yeah. Yeah. So I've had do? clients like that, that say the same thing where it's like, they're excited for the audition because they're excited to perform it as if it's theirs in that moment, you know, mm -hmm. like it's their opportunity to make what they want of it. Even if it's not necessarily what they may perceive casting wants or the producers want, it's like, it doesn't matter because you get to make it your own. And, um, and having, again, like that mindset going in and not so much of like, oh, I'll put my work into it, but I really don't want it, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. well, I just feel like contract. so much of our language is um, nonverbal, you know, so it's, it, there's always the subtext and, and casting, it's their job to watch things and decide if it's legit or not, you know, if they feel like they believe it. And if you don't believe it, even if you're, you know, like a award-winning actor, we're going to see it, you know, and I've, I've seen people who have been on shows for so long, you can tell they're like dead on the inside, you know, uh, and I'm sure, you know, being on sets and stuff and all you guys have, have, you know, you can see like who's present, who's not, who's ready to like, you know, leave back to their trailer as soon as their scene's done. It's like, you know, <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is such a juicy conversation, Angie. I'm so glad you are sharing this space yeah, thank with you. Me. as we get ready to head out you've given so many amazing nuggets and food for thought y'all this my my friend Saikon will often say um 
I'm chopping carrots. That's what she'll say. I'm chopping, not literally, but when she, something's making her think or like she's pondering something, she, I bet if she watches it, she's probably gonna say, Christine, no, you said it wrong. But it's the whole thought of just like, I still need to chew on that. I yeah. still need to chew on it. And I, I'm, I'm still, I'm still stuck uh, maybe 15, 20 minutes ago. When you, said, <laughs> you know, when it's slow, it's probably because you need, there's something you haven't dealt with that you need to deal with and you're getting the space to do that. I'm still I'm still yes. on that. That's so um, important. It still is so important. I, I constantly want I wish I could bring that home to a lot of people is like, you know, sometimes things aren't, you didn't book something because someone's going to go to the hospital soon. You need to be there, you know, or like, oh, you didn't book this little guest star because you need to be available to test for this series regular, you know, like mm-hmm. it, you don't know, you, you can't predict the future. So you have to be open to whatever that's going to look like for you. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. You've already said a lot, but I just I'm just gonna ask this because this is I've, this is my last question that I ask everyone on this series. Mm-hmm. I want you to hold in your mind's eye the actor who's seasoned, been in the game for maybe 15 plus years, and it just has hit a lull. And they're feeling frustrated, just thinking it's time to throw in the towel. Maybe they've reached their time. Then also holding your mind's eye, the, the the new, what I call the brand new being new, eager, but feeling stuck like they've hit a wall and feeling like they just, the hardest, that first opportunity feels like it's just never coming. Mm. Both feel very frustrated, but think they have the talent, but now are questioning all of it. If you could just offer any, any love, any good energy, what is something you would just ask them to think about or hold on to? before we go? I mean, it's kind of like reminding yourself who you are. And if it means watching the the work you've done before that reminded you why you got into this business, you know, or talking it out with someone you're close to about this stuff, you know, and just being able to speak what you're feeling into existence so that you can release it, um, you know, and, and then reclaim what it is that you need. Um, in that moment and if that means you need to stop being so critical of yourself and it means you just need to say everything from like an inner child kind of place like what would your inner child say about this like do you want to talk to them like that like what are you what do you need to hear right now that maybe you you feel like you haven't really been in that space for a long time you know and and recognize that it's temporary you know it's temporary it's it's okay to be in this void space but it's temporary and as long as you can release whatever that feeling is and know that you're going to feel differently later you know then it's okay to be not okay it's okay but it it doesn't mean that it's not going to be different later because as i think you said at the top of the show it's just like you know, things are inevitable, you know, life's inevitable, these ebbs and flows are inevitable, you know, and, and that's okay. It, usually when those things happen, it's because something else is coming really soon. And so when you feel like you're hitting a wall, it's because you need to pivot and you need to shift lanes. And if that means you take a break from auditioning for a while and you go on vacation or like you focus on just your kids and you do the mundane stuff every day and you just need to feel grounded back in that space, then do that, you know, as long as you're communicating that and it's like we recognize what that is, it's okay, you know, we're all human. So just don't be too hard on yourself um, and know that the, the right thing's going to come in your path as long as you are open to what that is and being open to receive. I love that. Thank you for that. Mm-hmm. Something you just said, I think I'll, I'll speak to it. The unspoken fear of many artists, actors is being afraid to communicate that in fear mm-hmm. of, oh, I'll get dropped and then they won't work with me and then I'm going to start, you know, it can mm-hmm. go down the rabbit hole. But what mm-hmm. I'm hearing is it's better to communicate earlier than after the fact, you know, because if there is something that's going on, I mean, this, if this is for me, this is my, this is my journey. Like this is, I don't plan, it's not my plan to stop acting. It's got, I know it's going to look different over the years as it has changed since I was 15. Right. Right. So it will change. So that means if you need a break, take a break. Yeah. You know, it's like this industry is not going anywhere, you know, exactly. But that communication and, you know, your your self-care, your mm-hmm. self-care is paramount. Oh, yeah. You know, 
you know, I just had a friend who took her own life this mm. week. And it just reminds me like, gosh, your self-care mental health is just, mm -hmm. just key, you know? Yeah. So yeah. thank you all for watching Booking Magnet Magic. Oh, Angie, this <laughs> conversation was so juicy. I, so, I was looking so forward to it and that it, you did not disappoint. This is Yay. good. A good way to spend my Sunday afternoon. Thank you. Um, Thank if you, you all have missed any part of uh, this series, just check check the links below. I don't even know what I'm talking about right now. There's going to be links. <laughs> check it. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast. I'll uh, have Angie linked in the show notes and I'll have her bio in the show notes so you can learn more about Angie and the work that she does. Angie, thank you so much. Thank I you, Christine. So Love thank you so you much. Thank you all for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye.